Welcome to the Piazza Weekend Warm Up and we're getting ready for match day 4 against Kalanga. It's going to be the last game before we take the break uh, for the World Cup uh, that's going to be starting this weekend. Should be an exciting game. Games against Kalanga are usually quite open, they're usually quite entertaining games. So we are looking forward to what should be a very interesting game. Um, uh, it's, it's hard to not remember the, the last game of last season where Kalanga beat us 8-4 and uh, you know it's, it's something that we ought to go back and rectify against Kalanga and with the same vein I'm sure they are also uh, coming to this game with the mind that look we've, we've beaten Piazza 8-4 before I'm sure we can do it again so they must definitely be looking forward to, to this game and expecting to come out with 3 points now just looking back briefly at the past weekend, we had two games, one against Tokanto on Saturday and then Oliven on Sunday. So the game against Tokanto was actually a quite nice game. We, we won it 7-2. Um, we could have scored more. Um, there was quite a few chances that were missed and not taken. And again on Sunday, I think that same trend uh, uh, that same trend of missed opportunities continued. We had, we started off the, the Sunday game quite quite well. Um, we had a lot of uh, chances to score which we didn't use, and I think on Sunday we actually got punished. Got punished. It showed that we actually playing against the champs. So we didn't take our chances. We got punished. The weather was quite tough as well. Um, but you know what? This is football. If you don't take your chances, you will get punished. We've got players who are a lot more physical. They've got the height, they've got the strength, they've got the body size. But when it comes to some of the corners and everything, we are not really taking our chances. And I think those opportunities that we are not using are coming back to bite us. So those are areas that we do need to improve on. Um, the areas also like your finishing in front of goal, we actually need to improve in that area as well because Saturday and Sunday we had clear goal scoring chances where we're coming up one on one against the goalkeeper sometimes you just have one man to beat and we're not finishing them off like we should so those are the type of things that we need to work on but I believe that as the season is still young we still have a long way to go with areas that will be given focus and we will improve on so we got to spend some time with the coach earlier to get his view of the, 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 the coming weekend and then also just to touch a bit on the past weekend, get his thoughts on the games against Okanto and Oliven. And we also got to pose a few questions for him, uh, looking at the past game as well as this coming game. And this is what the coach had to say. Last weekend we, we played against Okanto FC on, on a Saturday and on a Sunday we played against um, Oliven Stars of which uh, we collected uh, three points out of uh, possible six. We didn't manage to win against Oliven, but both, uh, both games we played good football. I couldn't complain about our performance on the day. In terms of our performance, I was happy with the way we, uh, we played against Okanto because Okanto is, is a new team in the league. So it's always important to make, uh, to, to, uh, to, to, to make sure that you put teams in, in, in their places because at the end of the day, people gain confidence. So I, I, I like the way the statement we made against Okanto. When we play them again next time, I'm sure they are aware of what is Piazzo. You know, so 7-2, good, uh, good, uh, good goals that we scored, the, the juniors goals. I mean, the, the Prince's penalty allowed this confidence. I mean, for a 15-year-old to have that confidence after the intimidation from the, their goalkeeper, but he managed to put the, uh, the ball away. That is good for a kid like him. And again, uh, coming to guys like Boik that have never played with power before, but they played together and find a coordination. And we could have kept a clean sheet, a, a clean sheet, but these things happen. We need money to win, uh, money to uh, keep a clean sheet. They managed to score two goals, but we managed to score seven. You know, but this such instance, we need to be able to finish off games because at some point I noticed that when we are five or six, we tend to relax, and that's not the nature of the game. If you relax, you you get punished because our aim was not to concede against Okanto, but we consider two goals, we take that one home. But uh, come Sunday, I think on Sunday, Jelen deprived us a, a good a good game of football. We could have, I mean, we could have, all of us, we are ready for the game. You could see the way we, where we took on all events. The first 30 minutes, we were all over them. We controlled the game. I mean, I, I, I didn't see us all even giving us a lot of trouble, apart from their two shots on target that they had. And that, that, those, those were their goals, about uh, the set piece and the, the long range that they scored. 
But above, apart from that, we had Oliven. We could have finished them off. But it's the nature of the game. As I spoke against Okanto when we were leading first half, we were like 3-0, 3-1, I think 3-1 or so. I told the guys that we need to punish. It was against Okanto, we could have scored at least. At least 10 goals we could have scored. We didn't take our chances. Come against Oliven, the same story. Olive Junior had a good chance. Morgan had a good chance. In terms of performance-wise, I was happy. But results-wise, it's not something that I expected. But I was happy the way the boys showed up on the day. I mean, we have played Kranga several times. And now, tomorrow is all about business. It's about getting the job done. I know that people might say, oh no, it's in Kalanga, it's our friend. There's no friendship, you know, in these games. Tomorrow is just uh, about uh, us uh, doing our job. That is making sure that we come out with three points. It's not going to be an easy, 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 easy task. It's the fact that we have played them four or five times along the, along, along, uh, along, uh, during the preseason. That shows you that they know some of us. They know our, some of our weaknesses. So. We have to be hungry enough to finish off in Kalanga tomorrow. I know they are ready. I'm not underestimating them, but we have to believe in our game plan. And I do believe in the boys. I do believe in the squad that I have here that we should be able to beat in Kalanga tomorrow. All right. And then in terms of the team news, uh, what can you tell us? Do you have a full squad available for tomorrow's game? The only person that is doubtful for now is Monday. He told me that he might not be there. We due to work uh, and Terry, our goalkeeper as well, he, he mentioned that he has, he, ha, he has some school work. He has to finish up tomorrow morning until in the afternoon. So the, by the time the game starts, he won't make it. So those are two people that I can mention that they are not, they are not available due to some uh, of the field matters that they have to sort out. And apart from that, we also had to welcome back Mangoba, who, who, who saved his two yellow cards, uh, two, uh, uh, his red card uh, he got against uh, Lion Stars. So, yeah, so far so good, man. I, I, I do have everyone on, or to, tomorrow, apart from the two people that I mentioned. So we are ready to go tomorrow. One of the <coughs> your main players in the midfield, in the central midfield, um, Jackie, has not been around. And Garabo has uh, stepped in over the last two games. How have you felt about his performance? You no, know, it's always important to have players like Garabo in the team. You know, it's easy. It's easy to translate to a message. To, 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 to uh, or what I can say, clever players, people who are knowledgeable about the game. You don't really talk much about how, how what should you do. They are, they know, they know what uh, the coach expect from him, and he has been around. He has played with Bo Hope. You know how how he's done, and you know how how important it is to me. That's why, although he doesn't stay around uh, Pretoria, but I make sure that he he's, he has to come on, on match days. Even today, I'm happy that he's here for practice because it's always important to have players that understand your vision as a coach. Some players they want to win a football game, but it's very key to understand the vision of the team and the coach. So whenever you're in the field of play, you know what needs to be done. So that experience and what has shown me over 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 past three, two games that he played, I'm happy with his performance. I'm happy with the professionalism, the way he carries himself around the players. All right, coach, all the best this coming weekend. Hope you come away with it, uh, with the whole three points. Thank you. He did actually indicate that um, one of the players that will be a doubt for the weekend is uh, Monde. Monde has played three, all the three games that we've played so far and he has been quite pivotal in the middle of the park. He has played a very significant role. Um, it's, it's impossible to, under, to overestimate his contribution in the team. So I think that would be quite a big loss for, for tomorrow. And it's going to be interesting to see how the coach sets up the team um, in his absence. And it's going to be interesting to see how the boys actually step into that, uh, that role and how they actually uh, stand up and be counted. It's a chance for some of the guys to stand up and be counted. Speaking of which, I had a chat with some of the guys before we came on camera around the very same topic of uh, what happens when you get suspended, when you get injured, you know. Um, and the fact that the competition is so tough that once you've gone out of the, the team, whether it's by injury, suspension, unavailability, for you to come back in and just step in, it's not an automatic thing. The, the competition is extremely tough. Um, uh, uh, another example would be Magnova who was serving his suspension. While he's been out, chance has come in and he has made that right back position his own. And you know, it's, it's just exciting to see the hunger and the eagerness from the guys, especially as we're starting off the season.
conditions of the, of the of the weather on Sunday made it quite tough on the guys. I mean, from the side of the field, you could see that the rain was really pounding down quite hard. Um, you can only imagine running, trying to run inside the fields. There was muddy puddles there. At times, you're trying to trap the ball, or the ball you're trying, it's coming up in the air and it doesn't even bounce, it literally just stands still in the water. Um, players are busy falling all over the place, the boots are slippery, they can't get good grip, they're trying to make passes, and the ball is getting stuck in the mud. It really made it quite a difficult game to play. I think it also robbed us as spectators, it also robbed us a, a, an opportunity to watch some beautiful football. We know that we want to play the ball on the floor. Oliver likes to play the ball on the floor. I think we would have had quite a very exciting game um, had the weather turned out differently. Nonetheless, the weather was the same for all teams and we all get to um, uh, go through the same experiences. And look, we, 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 we ultimately lost the game, unfortunately. And congratulations to Oliver. Yes, we need to work on how do we manage better in those situations. So we also had a chat with Langa a bit earlier and this is what he had to say about the first weekend as well as this coming weekend. The game that we played against all the stars, we played well. We managed the game but we missed a lot of chances. And then we made mistakes and then they punished us. But that game we were supposed to win that game. But we will fix on the next game. They got one chance and it was a goal. How much did it actually disappoint you guys to concede like that? Uh, it was a breakdown. two clear chances and then we didn't take those chances and then they just had one chance first half and then they punished us. What, what are your expectations for this coming weekend? Yeah, we have played them a couple of times, Matt, but like they know how we play and then we know them. So we have to go there and just kill the game first half. Thanks a lot, Langa. All the best for the weekend. Thanks. One of the things, the unfortunate things that did sort of stand out and put a stain on the game against Oliver was the ref's performance. It was not impressive and you know the refs when it comes to offside calls, offside rules, you want to be considerate of the fact that the ref is all by himself. He doesn't have an assistant down the line who is checking specifically at the offsides and is able to help. But at a certain point when you see that there's a trend that is ongoing it does put a very bad stain on things. It makes you wonder at a point to what extent do they even understand the rules because you see in many instances that at the time that the ball is played a player is on is on an onside position but as the ball is coming to him he has run beyond the last defender and at that point the refs are always blowing and giving us uh, offside uh, and blowing for an offside and that that is a bit unfortunate i think it's one of the areas that would definitely need some attention and some improvement um, but even beyond that, I felt this past weekend against Oliver, at a certain point it felt like the ref was a tough man playing against us. There was a one particular instance that stands out where Power won the ball against the opponent and he was tackled. Uh, the, 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 the guy fouled him. He still had possession of the ball. So the ref blew the whistle for a foul which makes you want to ask why not give us the advantage because it was actually a counter-attack it could have gone on to score so the ref blew for the foul didn't give us the advantage power tried to play the ball immediately the ref blew again to stop him from playing immediately and just after blowing he actually looked back towards the Oliver defense almost as if to say he's waiting for them to fall back which was quite odd like why should he blow for him to stop playing when there's nothing that's preventing him from playing right and then so power eventually left that ball and ran forward um uh, chance came forward to take the foul immediately from the same foul the ball got to morgan he chested the ball and he was pulled down the ref didn't give the foul no problem we play on power then took the ball and made a pass over to lunel and immediately blew again for a foul and look, at a certain point, it becomes a bit much. Like, at that point, it really felt like the ref was just trying to stop us by all means possible, which also is not a good 
not a good picture to paint on the game. Soon after that, there was another challenge that came through um, where a player went in with stats up, stats showing the kind of challenge that would be a yellow card on any given day. On Sunday, it was not even a foul. It makes you want to ask what on earth is going on. Uh, there was one other challenge which power was actually running for the ball and the midfielder from Oliven tackled. He literally had his ball, his foot over the ball. He didn't make direct contact with power. He, he hit the ball, blocked it and power fell over. But the ref still blew that for a foul, which doesn't make sense. How is that a foul? Is, are we not supposed to challenge for balls? Are we not supposed to make tackles anymore? I, I feel that the performance of the ref on Sunday was actually way below par. At the end of the game, with all the stoppages, the injuries and everything that went on, he gave us a measly 12 seconds. Only 12 seconds beyond the 45. And look, I understand, it's, 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 it's the ref's optional time. It's, it's his own discretion. So I guess we should be gracious and happy that he gave us 12 seconds. I mean, we can do better. I think the ref should be able to do better than that. It's, it's very unfortunate where the refs contribution of performance actually affects the outcome of the game. It's much better that the ref should just be a referee and let the players decide what the outcome of the game is and that's what we're hoping for as we continue with the, the rest of the season. It's gonna be many goals above five because we've been playing with them this season and it has their squad, they are 15 but we're able to give them um, about 5-1, five, 4-2, five, we're winning when we go, so we know them, we know how to beat them, so tomorrow is a straight win, 5 goals and above. So I think it's a clean sheet, first of all, okay. so then, uh, let me just put it 5-0. Five 5-0. Five yeah, 5-0. Alright, thanks a lot, uh, Angoba. Thank you. I see a goal from Morgan, okay. I see a goal from Prince, I see a goal from Tunia. From Tunia? Yes. So are you going with three, or there's going to be more, but these guys will score? Uh, I don't want to predict much because I haven't seen Kalanga play before, but I see three goals from three players. Alright. So each goal from each player, three goals in total. I think we will actually win this game. We have been conceding goals, um, so I think we will concede one goal against Kalanga, but we'll score seven goals. Uh, it will definitely be a free-flowing game. There will be a lot of goals this coming weekend. So I'm giving it a 7-1, and we're looking forward to what should be an exciting game. And with that, that is your Piazzo weekend warm-up, and hope you have a lovely weekend.